In this beginner tutorial, I'm showing three easy tricks to create amazing button interactions like these inside of Framer. If you want to use the same file I'm using in the video, you'll find it in the link in the description. So here we have three different buttons, all using the same simple technique, going from one state to another, either on hover or on click or on both hover and click. And this is one of the coolest things with Framer, how creative you can be with micro interactions like these. Okay, so for the first button, I am just gonna create a text field. I'm gonna say play sequence. I'm gonna change the font to be Toric. Then we're gonna create a frame around this text field like this, maybe here. Looks good. I am going to change the background fill here. Click fill, change to linear gradient. I'm gonna flip it around and we're gonna start changing the colors of this linear gradient. So let's see if I can map it to what it actually was. Let me see, maybe I'll actually cheat. I'll go up here, paste it in so that I can see what we have. So I'll take this, the left side, or actually the right side, I'll copy that color. And for the left side, I'm gonna copy that color. So that looks pretty similar. Now let's actually make this text a bit smaller so that it looks more similar. We're gonna change the size of the frame so that is more similar. And then we're gonna go to the radius click here, hold shift and just increase the radius. Maybe we'll even make it a bit fancy with a border, a white border that is gonna be like 25% maybe. So we get this little edge here that looks so cool. And that looks similar enough. Let's rename this to inner button. And with this inner button, I am actually gonna create another frame and we're gonna wrap it into this frame. So add frame, I'm gonna call this button container and we're gonna take the inner button, I'm gonna duplicate it and paste it. So we have two of them inside of our frame. For one of them though, I'm gonna remove the text and this one, I am gonna go to styles plus filters and blur. So you can see that we now have a blur here in the background. And we're gonna change that blur to be like 12. For this button container, I'm gonna select the button container. I'm gonna go to overflow, set that to visible. And I'm gonna remove the fill from here. And it's starting to look like something but we still need to create another frame inside of here. So I'm creating another frame here. And this frame has to be inside of the inner button because if we place it outside, it's gonna go outside of the frame as you can see here. So inside of the inner button, I'm gonna call it shine, as in shine. I'm gonna tilt it a bit and then I'm gonna go to styles plus filters blur. And we're gonna change it to maybe 12 as well, or maybe that's too much, let's say six. And we're gonna just drag down the opacity a tiny bit like that. And with this, we're ready to click here on button container, right click and create a component. And we can call it button container, sounds amazing. Gonna click create. And now we're gonna add a hover state. So hit plus hover and with that done, we'll go back to the first state. We're gonna select the shine, put it outside to the left. And for the variant one primary state again, we're gonna go to the inner button. So the background blur actually, let's call it BG blur. This one, we're gonna decrease in size. So hold down shift and option and just drag it down in size. And now for the hover state, there 
there's the magic. That's where everything cool is happening. You're a wizard, Harry. So here, the BG blur will increase in size again. The inner button here, the shine, is going to go from the left side in the top to the right side. So I'm just holding shift and dragging it to the right side. And now if we play it and I zoom in a bit, we have the cool effect. Now we could play around all day with the actual animation effect here if we want. So we go back to primary and to transition spring. Here we could play around with different damping, maybe different stiffness, different mass. And now if we play it again, it's gonna have a different kind of feel to it. But this is something you can play around with if you want the exact same effect that I had for my button. You can just go into this component and check it out here in the spring transition. Now over to the next button. So let's throw in a text field. Let's say text field. I'm gonna right click it and go to add stack. We're gonna change the stack color. We're gonna make it a dark color like the button. Then we're gonna select it again and make sure that it has some radius, maybe 16 gonna add some padding, but first make sure that everything is set to fit content so that the padding actually works. Maybe we want some more padding on the sides. So I'll add bigger padding to the sides like that. And maybe 20 in radius looks a bit better. I'm gonna zoom in on it. And with this selected, I'm gonna go to shadows I'm going to set the shadow to be inside. I'm going to set this to be minus eight, X minus eight. You can see something already appearing here. Maybe we set the blur to be four or six and we change this to be a light color. So 15% of white, something like that. And there we have our 3D effect. Now I'm going to select this, right click and add another stack. I'm going to go to this stack and I'm going to change the background color of it to be darker than the button. I'm going to round it a bit. So maybe 20 for now. And now I'm going to go to padding, click here and give it a couple of pixels in bottom padding. I'm going to once again make sure that it's set to fit content in both width and height. And we can play around with how high we want the button to be here. So maybe six. Then we can be naming OCD people and say that this is the button container and this is the inner container. Now I can go to button container here, right click, create a component. We can call it button container two because we're original. Everyone has something that makes them unique. Click create. And now from here, we're once again gonna hit plus here, but instead of hover, we're gonna have pressed. So I hit pressed. And for the press state, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna decrease the bottom padding here. So maybe two. And I'm also going to go to the inner container here and scroll down a bit, go to the shadows and just fade the shadow out. So maybe 5% instead. And now if we hit play and I click it, we get this 3D looking button. Okay. So button number three. One, two, three, four, five. First of all, I am going to create a text field that says like. Maybe I'll even bump it up a bit so it's a bit thicker. Satoshi bold. Looks pretty good. We have like. I'm going to hit Command C, Command V, and I'm going to say unlike. And once again, I'm going to make sure that the width is set to fit content and the same with the height. So we have like, we have unlike. Then I'm going to create a big frame here. Something like that, maybe. I'm gonna change the color of this humongous frame. 
maybe something like uh, that something like that that or that maybe i'm gonna go to styles go to filters and blur click this down add some more blur to it maybe 24 will be fine i'll add some radius so that it's rounded something like that maybe i'll even rename it to blur because you know naming ocd and there is one thing missing or two things actually first we need to get our gif so go to your favorite gif site and then paste it into your document like this and now it's just one more thing we need to create the actual button frame so i'll hit f and create a big button like this I'm gonna go to the sidebar and increase the radius, something like that. I'll give it this cool linear gradient again. I'm gonna flip it around. I'm gonna make it a different color, maybe something like that over there, and maybe something like that over there. Not exactly as the one I made before, but I mean, close enough. Close. So close. Lamb. Now we're just gonna take all of these items chug them into our frame so like unlike blur and gif all of them inside in a hot mess but that is fine we can rename this to be button container three and then i'm gonna right click create component and it's gonna be button container three cool create and yeah it looks like a mess i know but we're gonna fix this so I'm gonna target the blur, first of all. I'm gonna send that to the back, like that. I'm actually gonna select the unlike text, hold down shift and just hit my bottom arrow key. This like text here, I am gonna center in every shape and form. Maybe the blur should even go a bit further down. And this GIF first, I'm gonna center it too but then I'm gonna push it down into the ashes. That's where you belong, GIF. And there we have our original state. Now I'm gonna select the primary, hit plus on hover and pressed and click hover. And for hover, we're gonna send the like to the skies and we're gonna take our GIF and let it come up from the ashes like that we're gonna take our blur, select it, let it come like halfway up from the ashes, not all the way. And now if we hit play, it looks kind of cool already. And by the way, hitting play is just command P or on Windows, control P. Now for the pressed state, I think you are thinking we're gonna go here, then we're gonna go and hit plus on pressed, but that's not the case. We're actually gonna take this here, the primary state, and we're gonna go to variant, hit plus and variant, and this is gonna be a variant instead of a pressed state. Let me show you. So for this state, obviously, the like is also gonna go to the skies. The blur, do you remember, the blur kind of took over the show here. So it's gonna go like this, almost fully to the top. The unlike is going to go into the middle because in this state, and I'm going to center it by clicking here, this state is kind of when you click the like button, you want to be able to unlike it as well, right? And the GIF, it's not going to be down here because it's going to be sent up into the skies as well. And now we're going to go back to the primary. We're going to find this little lightning bolt here. And I'm gonna connect the lightning bolt to our variant. It's gonna be a tap event like this. And from variant two, we're also gonna have a little lightning bolt moment and click it back into the primary here on a tap event. Now, if we once again hit Command P and play it, I can hover it, okay, that works. And if I click it, hallelujah. We just created a like and unlike button. But this is not the only thing you can do with components in Framer. 
You can even nest components to create all forms of creative interactions. So if that sounds interesting, then this video is for you. Now, until the next one, have a great life.